Okay. okay. Well, God Heavenly Father, you call us to uh, paths that we don't know the ending to. We don't even know the the route, and and yet uh, you send us and and just call on us to trust in you. And so uh, we pray that you be with us tonight and uh, give us faith as we study your words, send your spirit to work in us, and uh, give us courage to step out, step forward into wherever you send us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, before we get into Genesis chapter 12, uh, I got a comment uh, from somebody uh, who watched uh, on YouTube. And uh, <clears throat> and this was uh, talking about the question of um, the, the creation days and whether it's a 24-hour period or not. Um, and he says, for me, the verses uh, below have always settled the question about the length of days during creation. According to the Bible, they were 24-hour days, and also months and years as we know them, thanks. Uh, and then he quotes, and there was evening and there was morning the first day, which is repeated again after each of the days. Also, Genesis 1, 14 to 16, uh, God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky, separate the day from the night, let them serve as signs to mark sacred times, days, and years, and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light to the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser night to govern the night. So, um, and, and we kind of talked about that a little bit, the, um, about the, how day seven doesn't save. Um, there was evening and morning, and so there's this question about, you know, why doesn't it when the rest of them do? Um, and uh, and then also what the the differences are, but um, and and how how that could be understood from from both perspectives. So, um, but do appreciate the comment. Uh, it's always good to hear from people uh, that are watching online. So, um, all right. So uh, Genesis chapter twelve, Abram. Um, somebody like to read? <clears throat> the Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram left as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sar Sarai, Sarah, Sarai. Sarai um, his nephew Lot, uh, all, and all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moreh at Chesham, 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 Chesham. <laughs> <laughs> at uh, that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he went on toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ia on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continued toward Negev. 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 Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got through the rough stuff. Bod. <laughs> <laughs> now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was severe. As he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife Sarah, I know what a beautiful woman you are. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is your wife. Then they will kill me, but will let you live. Say you are my sister, so they will, so that I will be treated well for your sake, and my life will be spared because of you. When Abram came to Egypt, the Egyptians saw that she was a very beautiful woman. And when, when Pharaoh's officials saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh. 
and she was taken into his palace. He treated Abram well for her, for her sake, and Abram acquired sheep and cattle, male and female donkeys, men's, men servants and maid servants and camels. But the Lord inflicted serious diseases on Pharaoh, the Pharaoh, and his household became household because of Abram's wife Sarah. So Pharaoh summoned Abram. What have you done to me? He said. Why don't why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister, so that I took her to be my wife? Now then, here is here is your wife. Take her and go. Then Pharaoh gave orders about Abram to his men, and they sent him on his way with his wife and everything that he had. <clears throat> so, this is really interesting as as I was sort of looking at again at it, at it again, and um. And so, as we go into this, has God ever called you to a foreign place? It could be a, a job, you know, it could be a, literally a going to another place, um, or it, it could be a, some other sort of unfamiliar territory that, that that God has sent you. Not necessarily sort of go and, you know, that sort of thing, but um, but has he ever, uh, you know, have had has something ever sort of presented itself where you were compelled to to go into an unfamiliar um, situation? You know, when I first started my job, I worked the inner city most. <clears throat> okay. I started in the, in the ghetto. All right. Yeah, uh, where a lot of things happen. All right, all right. How'd you feel? Scared. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, at that time, we weren't allowed to carry firearms. And okay. So. so did anything reassure you? Well, I had... Yeah, I, when they took me out of the ghetto, they put me in Rocky River. Okay. That was a big change. So so after you left, you felt reassured. Yeah. yeah. yeah it, was a lot, it was a lot nicer in Rocky River. Okay. So what? what why did you, I mean, was this just the only job available or? No. Uh, well, yeah, I guess for, for the city. I always wanted to drive semis, but uh, I, I'm glad I never got involved with that. Uh, yeah, I was I was able to get in. It's it's like the uh, United Auto Workers, where you have to know somebody to get in uh -huh. to the uh, United. Well, my former district manager was uh, tr trained the new people that came in for drivers, and I went and fill out probably twelve applications, and they threw them in the garbage. And when I used them as a reference, they called me the next day, and I was hired. Wow. Huh. But it was it, it's tough on a family working a night shift thirty eight years. Mm -hmm. It is. It's really hard in a family because that's not normal. Yeah. No, I'm sure. All right. Anybody else? I don't know. I was kind of somewhat the same as you, forced into a job in Bessemer, Alabama when I was 18 years old in a steel mill. So you can just imagine a country boy going to Bessemer, Alabama where they have white and black, white and dark fountains and restrooms and and I was a uh, foreman for the uh, black people, and, and I never even saw a black person. I saw Puerto Ricans, but I didn't have anything to do with black people. We, I lived in a farm country up in New York, and, mm -hmm. and so I'm. My problem was I was treating them just like I would treat anybody else, mm -hmm. and they took me out uh, behind the bar <laughs> one night, and and explained the situation to me and I didn't do it anymore. You know, well, what do I care what fountain I drink out of and what do I care? They're people just like me, mm -hmm. you know. And, and well, I wasn't welcomed there because I was white. And was well, mostly, I was welcome, but mostly uh, the black people. The white people didn't welcome me because I was messing them up. Mm -hmm. Huh. So I guess that's a foreign kind of a thing. Okay. All right. Well, God sent me to Ohio. <laughs> wow. Aren't you lucky? No, was, no, was God no. said, and How could we possibly take a found <laughs> I'm not saying it's Canaan, but I'm, I'm saying it's, you know, it's far away from home. You know, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's still technically Midwest, you know, and I've lived in the Midwest all my life. Um, but it's, I mean, it's different. It, it really is. Um, even just the foods. We didn't have a large Eastern European um, a group of people in in any of the other places I live. So um, things like pierogies and, and things like that that are just 
sort of standard around here is stuff that and and um and and what's that chicken stuff that that Greg makes? Um, chicken paprikash. Paprikash, yeah. I'd never heard of that before. <laughs> it's great. I love it. So, you know. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it's just, I, you know, it, it's it's introduced us to a lot of new things. We have to take them down to the neighborhood that you worked in if you want really <laughs> <Yeah>. ethnic food. <laughs> Get some greens. <clears throat> so all right. Um, so, has God ever called you to make a significant sacrifice? I don't think so. No, I don't. Nothing really I don't, pops out at you. No, I don't. I don't believe so. I had to make a hard choice once. I mean, things have happened. <laughs> that, but. Yeah. I um, it was real ta- it, well. It was, it was tacky after afterwards, but uh, when my father passed away, okay, um, the uh, my mom did, did not want you know any kind of a showing at the funeral parlor, and um, uh, he was cremated, and so um, I had the eulogy all set for my when my mom passed away and when my dad passed away mm-hmm. you know to do because neither one of them were, were really had it you know were churched okay and um, so they they allowed us to use a, a room at the funeral home um, was, without any charge okay uh, my father was in you know like a body bag type thing on a cart Hmm. Which was very tacky. Wow. Okay, but I I I went through with the eulogy just like he was in a coffin, you know, and and with the, all of the relatives there and that stuff, and that um, that was a sacrifice for me to do something like that. So, yeah. And after afterwards, you know, I felt you know bad about it because you know it, it would have only cost a few hundred dollars, but my my mom didn't want that, you know. Sure. So anyway, so for me that was a sacrifice to to have to do something like that. Okay. And when we did my mom's, it was just just a memorial a memorial service. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing we think about sacrifice. We usually think of like money or, or something like that, but sometimes it's just be put in a really difficult situation that you have to. It's just like you can't wait for it to be over. And oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, all right. So, what does God command Abram to do? Verse one. Leave. Okay. Leave your country. Yep. Your people. Your people. Your Back house. It up and your go. father's household. All right. Leave everything. And what does God promise for Abraham? He'll be blessed. He's yeah. going to give him the land. This will all be yours, he said. I will give you this land. Make you a great nation, bless you, make your name great, mm-hmm. be somebody, a blessing. Somebody curses you, he's going to take care of the cursing. So that would be protected? Yeah. Well, you know, and that's a, to have, to have God go, all right, anybody curses you. Yeah. You let me take care of him, you know. <laughs> Did you hear what he said? <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> All right. Um, so, did moving earn God's blessings for Abram? I would say his obedience. Okay. All right. This is all right. This are because this this seems this is a conditional sort of thing. All right. If you do this. Then I will do these things for you, okay? And so, yeah, he was obedient. He he did what God said. All right. Why was he obedient? Do you think because he wanted the stuff? He wanted his name to be great. Well, God definitely sort of holds the carrot out, doesn't he? Like I, I've got all these blessings for you, you know. All right. But just the fact that he took God at his word. And, you know, and it's one thing to say, well, you know, God talked to him, you know. But, 
you know, he could have said, wow, that was a weird dream, you know, <laughs> or, man, what did I eat, or, you know, <laughs> and, uh, so he just went, oh, okay, God, you know, and, um, so, yeah, the, I think you've got a like lot of, huh? of faith to do, yeah. to leave everything. Yeah, yeah, and in, and in fact, you know, we find out in the New Testament, uh, I was in the book of Hebrews, uh, it talks about Abraham believed God, and his faith was credited to him as righteousness, right? God gave him faith, and, and so um, that faith was the credit that he got. So it wasn't, and, and you know, this is something that I was, I was thinking about, um, you know, when you talk about, um, talking about sacrifice and, and things like that, um, talking about uh, something like, like tithing or, or, or giving a, a significant amount of, um, of your income or, or something like that. And, um, and, and is, is by doing that, do you, you know, it's like, okay, God, here, I, I greased your palm now, bless me, you know, and that's not what it is. You're not bribing God. Okay. But at the same time, I, I've experienced this and everybody that I know that has, has made a, um, a, a reg that, that has made a conscious decision that I'm going to give a, a percentage uh, a regular percentage of my income to God that they're so thankful for they you know nobody ever I've, I've never heard of of a former tither put it that way that that once people do it they go this is great you know and and um and I find that the people that do that they typically they they might start out that way but then they they start giving more and more because they get excited about doing it. And, um, and I, that's been my experience. And I, for so long, I thought, oh, there's just no way I can do it. And, and then I finally did it. And it was like, oh, this is awesome. And, and it's, it's really hard to describe like why, because it's not like all of a sudden I'm rich or anything. Right. But, um, but it's just, it's just a really great feeling. And, and, um, you know, it, it, what it is, is it, by doing that, it's an expression of faith and it's it's sort of stepping out boldly and 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 saying god i'm gonna do this cover me <laughs> and uh and and god says all right i got you covered and uh and then you know he responds with blessing because we earned his blessing no but because there's something special going on there there's a significant relationship going on there now, if you go into it saying, all right, well, let's see. If I give this much, I can expect to get X amount in return. Then I'd, I'd say don't expect it, all right? If you're doing it for your own benefit, then you're doing it for the wrong reason. But um, but if you're doing it as an act of faith, then it's it's not that, that God's going to... Um, that God's like your stockbroker that's going to give you interest on your investment. But... Um, that it's that just that that act is going to be um, it's it's going to end up being a blessing for you and and so that's what you know Abraham or Abram um, experiences here is God says look I'm, I'm going to give you all these blessings so go ahead and, and step out in faith and um, and do what I say and and um, you know you'll be glad you did all right. Um, so, of the blessings promised to Abram, which ones would mean the most to you? There's some pretty big gifts that, that God offers in there. Mm. Wow. I think that, that he's going to that he's going to take care of the people that you're going to take care of. Okay. He's going to take care of the people that you want taken care of. I will bless those who bless you? Yes. Uh -huh. yes. All right. Yeah, well, wow, wouldn't that be, you know... That'd be neat. Like, I really want to help these people. And, and God says, you want to help those people? I will help those yeah, people. Yeah. Like that All right? That's a, that's a, that'd be a pretty big thing. Yeah? Anybody else? 
We don't care about the other things. <laughs> you know, the nation of Don or the nation of Bud. <laughs> you don't want well, that. You know, what does that mean? It means you can have a lot of grandkids. You know? <laughs> well, I like that part. That'd be mm-hmm. nice. You know, <laughs> one is exhausting. <laughs> How you do it, Don <laughs> or Bud? Uh, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> we we stress to my daughter every time we see her. One, one's good. We're we're happy with one. <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> you know, I, I think that says something, though. That, you know, you look at school. <laughs> at least. <laughs> yeah, and another way to look at this, at this question is, um, which would be more valuable to you, to receive the blessings or to be a blessing to others? You know, because the, the first few is, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. That's all stuff that I'm going to do for you. And then the rest of it is, these are things that I'm going to do through you to bless others. Yeah. That's true. You know, and yeah, what, how awesome would that be? Like my name, whatever, (laughs) you know, like last thing I need is fame. (laughs) But, but if you can use me to bless others, that would be really cool. All right. Um, all right, uh, verse 3b, the, the second half of verse 3, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. What does that mean? Any idea what God's referring to there? How there, how that was fulfilled? How are all people blessed through um, Abram? Hmm. Think about Abram's descendants. Can we possibly look that far ahead? You think? Well, I mean. It's you have to look quite a ways ahead um, in the Bible, because you have to get all the way into the book of Luke. Um, in Luke chapters one and two, all right, because Abram is the father of all Israel, all right. Okay. Which means that he's also the father of Mary and Joseph and Jesus. I mean, that's uh, I don't know that. I believe that's true, but I thought I was stretching it quite a ways. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it comes we back to Jesus. <laughs> yeah, there's, you know, there's a there's a big gap there, right? But you also have to look at you know God's time frame mm-hmm. um, is quite a bit different from ours, and so so yeah, I mean, we have um, all all families, you know, everybody is going to be blessed through you. Well. How is everybody blessed through Jesus? And if, um, and it was through, you know, Jesus is one of Abraham's descendants, quite a few generations down. But, you know, you look at that one descendant compared to the whole rest of everybody of, of his descendants, you know, the whole nation of Israel, that's a pretty big deal right there. You know, you're going to, uh, you know, the, yeah. does, do, do all the rest of them add up to that one as far as the, the blessing? And I, I think you'd have a pretty hard time um, totaling up the, the blessings of, the, of all the rest of his descendants um, Correct. compared to what Jesus did for us. So I suppose that's the answer then. I just didn't think that far. Yeah. <laughs> ahead, I guess. Sure. Well, yeah, and it, you know, that's it's hard to to look at the the time lapse, right? Um, all right. So Abraham or Abram was seventy five years old when he moved, right? So that's a pretty big change in his life. All of a sudden, at, at seventy five, um, have your plans for your life changed at any point? You know, where did you think of where you are now compared to where you were, you know, um, many years ago? Do you do you find yourself, is this sort of about where you expected to be, what you expected to be doing, and, 
and that. Mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, yep. If I could have done it all over again, I'd have never moved to North Ridgeville. Oh, yeah. I've always considered we lived out here 30, 39 years next month. And um, I've always felt this is this just this has just been a backward community. I mean, it's like it's like going anywhere. I mean, it's it's growing in size. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but Center, to have Center Ridge Road the way it is, thirty nine years later, and and the growing population and stuff like that, just like like it with Brunswick until they widen some of the roads out in Brunswick area. That you know. And even Pro Road out in Brunswick is that's the same thing as Center Ridge Road when it's you know time to go back and forth to work or, or any time of the day. You want to really get yourself mad? What? I read in the paper the other day that Grassman's going to get an underpass for the railroad tracks instead of this 90 degree turn like we have on Route 83. Yeah. <laughs> Stupidest thing anybody mm-hmm. ever saw in their life. <laughs> and, that they, uh, and what was the reason they did that? Because uh, Ridge of- Lumber didn't want to. Move, but they could have moved. <laughs> if we had an opportunity to, you know, to live in a f- few other cities other than North Ridgeville, okay. And the only reason we moved out here was because g- real close friends of ours moved in up about uh, up further up the street from where we live, and you know the price of the houses out here were really reasonable for what yeah. you were getting. Yeah. You know, Still in comparison are. to Cuyahoga yeah. County, yeah. taxes were a lot lower here than it is in Cuyahoga County too. Yeah, but it did. It just like this city just. It's not going anywhere. You know, I mean, they do a lot of talking, but you don't see the, you don't see the results. And you're right about that curve that they got. <laughs> the genius, the the genius that thing. figured out it must have been it must have been one of the geniuses that figures out where where <laughs> one lane of traffic has coming off the freeway and one has to go over there over by Midway Mall by Midway Boulevard. They're coming off a of ninety, and you got to do one of these numbers, you know. <laughs> Another genius. It is a highway. They put two <laughs> ninety degree bends in it. <laughs> Dead man's curve. That's another one. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I looked at it that far ahead <laughs> when I moved down here. I don't know. No, so. no I, I, I never. So. I expected this place to really, you know, do something. You know, we moved down here so that so that our kids could. I went to so many different schools. I came and. So I went to four different high schools to begin with. Mm-hmm. So I don't have any roots. So we went someplace so that, because our youngest daughter, Jeannie, was starting kindergarten. The oldest daughter was in th- third grade. Well, we we were trying to buy a house. You know how it is then. You know, I mean, we got seven hundred dollar income tax check, and we were we we're gone. We're buying a house. You know? <laughs> but we wanted to buy a place where the kids could start school and finish school in the same place. And wherever it was, we were going to stay, mm-hmm. and we did. And and I think that worked. That's that's the only reason we stayed in Ridgeville, I believe. Because mm-hmm. okay. we had opportunities to move all over any place in the country. Almost. So you're kind of where you expected to be then. Well, anything I don't expect, I didn't expect Harry to get sick. Okay. So I expected us that we would be doing things that we don't do. She was a lot stronger than I, and I never thought that she would be the one to get sick. The same thing with Gail, you know, when I reached... When I plan on retiring, I plan on doing a lot of traveling. I mean, that was a goal. Yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to go overseas and everything. You know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, like I hear a lot of people. Happen. I I hear that from uh-huh. that they just didn't expect. You know, some sort of health issue with with somebody mm-hmm. happens and well, that. Because she was a strong person. You know, she grew up on a farm. She was a farm girl. She I couldn't keep up with her. Yeah. I, I really couldn't. So that I did not expect, and I didn't think I would be here. I didn't. I thought we would be, like you say, we'd be traveling, we'd be doing things like that. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Oh, this is depressing. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's move on because we're, 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 we're right. something that's good. positive. Because it's about to get worse. Okay. Oh, oh good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, all right. So God promised Abram all these blessings, and when he arrived, first thing happens: famine. All right, verse ten. All right, he journeyed on, continuing toward the Negev, and there was a famine in the land. So he went down to Egypt to sojourn there, because the famine was severe in the land. All right, so God says, "All right, go to go to Canaan." So so he gets there, and, and he's heading there, and he's he's 
he's just kind of getting there and, and stuff and famine. You know? And so anything like that ever happened to you? You know, and, and here's the thing. It's here are these. I'm doing God sent me here. This is what, you know, oh, there's going to be all these blessings. It's going to be great. And he gets there and it's famine and I can't even stay here. God, you sent me here. I can't even stay here. I've got to leave. There's no food here. What are you doing? I should have stayed back where I was. And this is the, the faith of Abram. It just blows me away. Um, But, you know, I, this really, this really hit me. All right. Because... Um, I, I, I looked at this and I thought, you know, how many times have I sort of followed God says, all right, go here, do this, you know, whatever. And, and you go and, and it seems like so often that I'll go and do it and it blows up in my face. What the heck? (laughs) (laughs) You probably Probably expected to be a little bit smoother (laughs) ride when you came here, didn't you? (laughs) I mean, you know, you know, just to use that as an example, though, but but here's the thing. We know how it all plays out, though. All right? We know the end of the story, and we know that everything worked out for Abram. Yeah, but, yeah. Because yeah, we so can look back. Here's the thing. When, when God sends you somewhere, he doesn't promise that there's not going to be bumps in the road. And it might get worse before it gets better. All right? But... Look. <laughs> Sometimes it would just be nice to have smooth sailing. <laughs> no, you got too many chuckles. <laughs> you haven't filled yeah. the chuckles yet. <laughs> but you know, remember, God is looking long term. All right. Not only did the things work out great for Abram, um, it worked out great for all of us. And you know, so when you look at this. Yo, I mean, he had to be going crazy. He so that's had... what I was going to say. You you painted a pretty good picture, but I don't know that he felt that way. I'm not too sure. Well, see, we know the rest of the story. He yeah, didn't. That's what I'm thinking. You know, it's that's just like think about Good Friday. This always <laughs> Good Friday was always kind of a weird thing for me growing up because why is this so somber and sad? We know the rest of the story. Yeah. Right? We know that. He had to do this to save us from our sin. This is a good, there's a reason it's called Good Friday. So why, you know, it's like, I always felt so fake acting all somber and sad and everything because I thought, this is a good thing. <laughs> I, wonder how, I wonder how long it took to, to call it Good Friday after it happened. That's a good question. I don't, I don't know, I the, know, you know the history of the that particular um, observance and, you know. Like, how long did it take after World War II to call it World War II? I don't know. <laughs> or, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I have no clue. They still, the French and Indian War. I'm sure they didn't called, call it Good Friday. That one really should have been called World War One. when you look at all the nations that were involved in that one, and that never ended up getting that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the, so, yeah, I, I think that this is a, that the fact that this happened to Abram, that we can find encouragement in this. And that look at what happened to him. God called him to something and it got worse. But then it got better. So we can use that. So we yeah. can look at that and say, when God calls us to do something mm-hmm. and to step out and take a risk for him, right? If it gets worse, that doesn't mean that God is saying, nope, that was the wrong thing. All right. It may be that God is saying, all right, good, you're on the right path, and now I'm going to throw you a curve, and it's going to get worse, but you're going to be blessed through this. And um, and, and it, you may not understand it when it happens, but this is just, this is going to strengthen your faith, and, and this is going to, um, you know, this is, this is just going to really push you so that once once you get through this, man, you can handle anything. Okay. And, um, you know, so, you know, I, I've been through some pretty serious bumps in my life and, um, and, and things where, where when I, 
when and it, it, or even whether it be my life or, or you know other friends of mine in, in other churches and stuff like that and I can tell you that the, some of the bumps that, that we've you had. You're to talk about your friends again, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean other pastors. <laughs> okay. We're assume, we'll yeah. assume that they aren't the ones who are. Okay. <laughs> Maybe they're not Luther pastors. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, you, you know, he just asked for it when he said, I couldn't help it. <laughs> I know sometimes it's just so easy. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. That's so mean. <laughs> Sorry. Now you know where Greg gets it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I, I look at, you know, even just the financial problems that we've had here, okay, are nothing compared to other financial problems that I've seen in other churches, you know. And having been through that, and coming here, everybody's panicking, and, and I'm going, oh, you guys, this is nothing. <laughs> really? Did they shut off your utilities to other places? <laughs> yeah, but I have friends that say pizza and, and, and churches that have, talked, that have million dollars worth of budgets. Yes, and, I know. And I'm, and we I, we just, can't even comprehend that, can we? No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we went um, to the Methodist. Uh, I have a friend on the Methodist board and of the of their budget. They're working on their budget three months ago, and she's telling me about some of the things we had that kind of money. <laughs> what we could do with that money? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you. Know, we just struggle along. <laughs> yeah, but you know, Jesus didn't have a lot of money either. No. In fact, the money he did have, his treasurer was skimming off the top. <laughs> yeah. Look at all, all the problems this church has had. I know. You haven't been here for all of them, but I mean, you've been here not yeah. quite the whole time, but pretty close. And all of the problems yeah, that know. they've had and the divisions that they've yeah. had and I things that have Denneke. happened. And a couple times in the past, you know, where we thought they were gonna, doors were going to close, the church is still here. Yeah. And you know what? You look at this congregation and how close-knit everybody is here. All right? So many congregations that have lots of money also have a lot of politics families against other families well you're right about that okay, yeah, so you don't need to have a lot of money in, in your congregation what's the other one <laughs> Hatfield Hatfield Hatfields and the McCoys yeah no, you're right. I, I so agree. but you know there's <clears throat> and there's poor churches that have politicking too but you know the fact that that this congregation has been through so much it's really people are come together they help each other out and you know and um and, and God has brought blessing through those struggles. And it's also given everybody a real appreciation for what we have. And when things go really well, boy, man, we're really, you know, praising God for that, you know, because we recognize what a blessing it is. Whereas if it comes easy, then it's just, yeah, whatever, you know. And, and you just, it's easy to take for granted, All right? We don't take blessings for granted around here. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> We take everything we get, though. We sure do. <laughs> right. Um, all right, so uh, Sarai was actually Abram's half-sister. We see that in Genesis twenty twelve. He, he mentions that. All right, so does that justify his half-truth? Where, oh, just tell him you're my sister because you're really beautiful and, um, you know, and, and, and I don't want him to, to kill me. Really? She was his half sister? No, I don't know. Yeah, okay, that's kind of weird. Yeah. It's kind of icky. <laughs> this is, this but is, I know this was back in the yeah, day. <laughs> yeah, this is a long time ago. Things were different back then. All right. Um, well, because. Yeah, same. Well, he really lied um, because he wanted to be treated better. Oh, okay. Didn't he? I yeah. mean, it was. It wasn't because well, he was, tr- he wasn't really trying to protect her. He just. No, no, no. He wasn't trying to protect her. He was trying to protect himself. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't so much he wanted to be treated better. He didn't want to be killed. Like, oh, well, oh. she's married to this other guy. She's really pretty. Let's kill him so that we can have her. Was she a lot younger He's... than he? Is that no? She was only ten years younger than him. Ten. 
That's that was something that really struck so she me was about 65, this. Sixty-five, huh? She's sixty-five. I'm checking. <laughs> you know, and I see like you kind of hot. It's 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 not a really great picture, but this this picture this is the the picture here is is Abram discussing this with with Sarah and saying, "All right, tell him you're my sister, okay?" It looks you know? like a sister. And, but you know, in this, like, it shows him really old, and she's got, and you can't really see it because it's black and white picture. But in, um, you know, she's got sort of dark hair, and you know, and 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 she, yeah, she looks pretty good. She looks like she's about twenty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, she yeah. was sixty-five. I mean, not too many sixty-five-year-old women would sit like that. Elizabeth <laughs> Taylor did. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Just you know, imagine oh, plastic surgery. Imagine a seventy-five-year-old guy telling his sixty-five-year-old wife, "Look, you are smoking hot, and they're gonna kill me to get you." <laughs> well, that is kind of cute, except for that she is really a sister. <laughs> <laughs> well, then why did uh, let me ask you something? Then. <laughs> to still think that if he thought that they were going to kill, the pharaoh was going to kill him, then when the pharaoh did find out that. She was actually his wife. Why didn't he kill him? Well, you know... Because he was blessed. You know, and, and that's the whole thing. It, it, I don't know. God, now, co- God with, covered him. How, how, did he, how did he find out? Because know. Pharaoh got struck with a plague. All right? And he went... Pharaoh went, Whoa, what's going on here? And, um... <clears throat> so, let's see. We have, uh... Uh, verse 17, the Lord struck Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai. Pharaoh called Abram and said, what is this you've done to me? Why did you not tell me that she she was your wife? So somewhere along the line, he kind of figured out what was going on. Right. He wasn't much of a husband if he let her go into the Pharaoh's whatever. Yeah, well, yeah that's whatever. the other thing. Like, well, he was right. They saw her and went, wow. <laughs> and took her. And took her, yeah. And he didn't stop it, apparently. And yeah. And yeah. God just told him he had his back covered. He so, should have yeah. done something. I'm, I, I'm alive. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's that's that's. You just go with him, honey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'll be all right. I'll be all right. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> So, so why did he lie? Don't get me right? <laughs> to protect himself. To protect himself. Okay. So, how did this show his, the weakness in his faith? Because he had to lie. All right. All right. He lied to protect. Look at this. What is he saying here? He said, "Oh, they're going to kill me." All right. But what did God promise him? He's going to cover him. He's going to cover him. He's going to make him a great nation. If you're dead, you can't have kids. All right. So, what was he doing? He was doubting God's promise. Mm-hmm. Right? So now, you know, we look at this. God sends him into Canaan. There's a famine. He's going, what is going on? Now we're, I have to go down to Egypt just to survive. You know, they we can see life. that here's... <laughs> and this is something that always strikes me about all these sort of heroes in the Bible. That except for Jesus, they all fall short. And But, you know, that's the point. Uh, you know, we always talk about what heroes these people are. But when you look at them, most of these guys did some pretty despicable stuff. And they're not the sort of, you know, these guys, these are scandalous people. But that's the point. That God uses sinners, oh. and he does great things through sinners. And it's so important to remember that as, as we look at these people. These are not these sort of paragons of righteousness, you know. These are just sinners. But yeah, this really shows how weak his faith was. They said, oh, I'm going to get killed. And see, and if I get killed, then I can't <clears throat> father a great nation. And so I've got to I've got to do this. You know, we have to lie in order for God's promise to be kept. All right, this is something that's that's really important. Um, just in some of the, the, the stuff I've been reading about sort of casting a vision for your church and all that kind of stuff. And, um, and and one of the points that, that was made in one of the books is, you know, there's going to come a time where you're following the, the vision that God has laid before you, and you're going to feel like you need to compromise your morals 
in order to um in order to make that vision happen. Like he just did. Yeah. Like Abram did. Right? And and the point is is that God is never going to call you to do something where you have to compromise your morals. Right? It may look like it. It may seem like it. And you may think I'm this I have to. Right? But regardless of what you see or what you think, you don't have to. Right? You need to trust God and trust that God is going to work that out for you. And and in fact, we do see here that when Pharaoh found out, he didn't go, oh, I'll just kill Abram and then this won't be a problem anymore. Right? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> and, and take your wife with you. She probably wasn't any good anyway. <laughs> right. So, um... So, have you ever... Uh, did you ever lie or feel tempted to lie to protect yourself? Many times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or, or maybe sort of do like Abram and, and not tell the whole <laughs> truth? That's, you know, that's tough. It's tough that, you know, people have expectations of you, whether it be in your marriage, whether it be dealing with your kids, whether it be in your job. Um, you, you don't want to look bad. Or you don't want, you're worried that, you know, what's going to happen if I tell the truth here? I want to share a lie with you that that, that, that that's really was, I mean, I felt so bad. I think probably the worst, worst lie I ever did. <laughs> I was 30 years old, and I promised that I was going to quit smoking. And, and Gail was at the shopping, at the mall shopping, and... and I think Rick Rick was the one that was around at the time, but anyway, or maybe Chris was. I don't remember, but anyway, but I made a promise that I was I was going to stop smoking. Okay, and so I went. I I lied because I was still smoking. I went into one of the doorways, you know, like like when you like a shoe store. You know how they have the windows, and then mm -hmm. you have to walk up a little ways before you get in. So I, I lit up a cigarette. Meanwhile, I. They came back and they caught me smoking. You know, and I always told told the kid I said. Don't ever make a promise if you can't keep it, okay? And I made a promise, okay? And they came back because I didn't give them the credit cards. <laughs> so, so anyway, so, so you know, there I was, you know, I mean, in front of somebody that, you know, I told, you know, the fan, that I don't make a promise you can't keep it. I took the pack of cigarettes, threw them away, and never touched a cigarette after that. But I felt so bad because the example that, you know, that I set for them, mm -hmm. you know, that you know, I expected them to you know go along with me, you know keep your promises, and here I broke one. Mm -hmm. That right. was that was the, one of the worst lies ever. I mean, I, I mean, I, I know I was red as a beet. I probably looked like Rudolph the red. The, 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 the nose on face. Rudolph. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, that was an experience. I never touched a cigarette after that. Yeah, boy, when you when you do something, whether it's lying or, or something else, where you fail your kids. Man, that's a miserable thing. Mm -hmm. To look them in the eye, you know? I mean, you felt you just wanted to crawl. In, you felt like a rat wanted to crawl into a hole someplace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You, you think, what did... What did Abram say to Sarah after all this? You know? Like, what was she... What was she thinking? And, and, and what was... I, I don't think I want to be there... For that kind of, you know, some people will say, I'd like to be a fly on the wall to hear that conversation. That's, a, I wouldn't want to be there for that mm -hmm. one. You know? How I, could you? <laughs> how could you? Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's how much you think of me? Right, right. Yeah. Well, you know what I had to do? You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and just, you think He was about disgusting, it. that Pharaoh. Yeah. Anything? <laughs> <laughs> but he only told a half a lie. Oh yeah, so that makes it all right, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, she's a half a half sister. So. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I bet that was the end of you know what. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of father nations. And yeah, stuff. Like that happened. Even though it says before that she was barren, so <laughs> she she must have forgiven him later on. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, so he slept but, on the couch right. a few nights. <laughs> 
Okay. How did Abram's lies impact those around her? All right. We already see what, what Sarai had to go through. Okay. But what else? Who else suffered because of it? The Pharaoh. Yeah, Pharaoh. Um, the people that were in his house. Yeah. He might have looked bad because he didn't kill him. Maybe that made him look weak. I don't Could know. Could be. Could be. But, um, I mean, you know, definitely, I, I look at this, the Lord struck Pharaoh and his house. And then you got verse 20. Pharaoh gave orders about Abram to his men. So his men must have not looked down, must have looked down on him too. How could you do that to your own wife? Mm-hmm. So that had to yeah. be disgusting. You think about the, um, you know, you think, okay, so, so, and it's just great plagues. I don't know what that was, all right? But these were the days before penicillin and, you know, and, and stuff. And, and you think, what, what that must have been? That's another thing that we probably don't want to know, or at least not over dinner. Um, so, yeah, because he lied. And just, it seems, well, it was only a, it was partly true. You know, what's the big deal? It was, I was doing this to, to save my skin, all right? Mm-hmm. But here, his wife is hurt by it. Pharaoh and his entire household were hurt by it. And, you know, that puts a blotch on the entire nation of Israel. Yeah, this is our great, you know, forefather. And look what he did. So, you know, (laughs) yeah, that's... I really, really mess up massively at some point. I don't want it to be recorded for <laughs> the thousands of years they'll be reading about it. <laughs> like, oh, Anything but that. You know? <laughs> you know, like, get to heaven. Abram, yes, I said it, all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all right, so this, this, the whole concept, the end justify the means. Ends justify the means. Right. This is this is something that um you know that we find ourselves wanting to do to say, you know, it wasn't the right thing to do, but I had to. Um the people use that for so many excuses that it's like collateral damage in war, things like that. Mm-hmm. They use that for sometimes an excuse rather than. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we even see that in um, where uh, when the devil tempts Jesus and he says, look, uh, here's all the nations of the world. Just bow down to me and I'll give them all to you. In Mm -hmm. other words, look, you can bypass the whole cross thing. I will leave all these people alone and I'll stop bothering them. All right. All you got to do is worship me and justify the means. Look, yeah, all these people, they'll be all yours. Of course, Jesus is smart of that because he knew that if he did that, then he'd sin and he couldn't pay for the sins of the world and he'd lose us anyway. Um, and he's God. He would never do that anyway. But, um, but you know, boy, to us, that looks pretty tempting. Yeah. Huh. He'd be like Murdoch. What's his name? Marlon? Whatever he is. You know, if, if, if you were 20 years old and somebody comes to you and you say... Look, for 40 years, you can have anything you want. But when you're 70 years old, you got to go to jail. But you can have boats, you can have airplanes, you can have all the women you want, all the partners oh, you want, oh, all the pretty made you off. Want. Is that, made off. That's what yeah. I'm thinking. You have all you want, but you got to go to jail. But now look what the family's doing. Yeah. Son killed himself. Son killed himself, yeah. Now they say the two-year-old grandson is going to end up paying for something. Well, and, you know, I mean, you think about that, everybody with that name. Yeah, it's they wanted to be, change their name already. Yeah. So look what who, he's done to people. It's, it's like having the last name Hitler, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to go get my name changed, thank you. <laughs> yeah. 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 <clears throat> um, I saw a, a picture that somebody posted online. It was. It said, this is my, um, this is my grandpa's military hat. Um, and he took a picture of it. And said, "Yes, that's a swastika on it." 
Whoa. <laughs> I had an uncle that was the tiniest little sucker, and his wife, his wife, she was about three times as big as he was. He was a tiny little thing, and he was mild, meek mannered. He never said a word to anybody, and uh, his whole life, and everyone considered him just this little geeky thing, you know. And and when he died, and they went through his clothes and all that kind of stuff. They found a Ku Klux Klan robe in his closet. Oh, wow. <laughs> huh. <laughs> so he, who knows what kind of life he actually led. <laughs> so, you know, even, you know, some people that are involved in organizations like that, mm -hmm. you think of or Nazis, and, you know, Nazis are always sort of your extreme example, okay? Yes, yes. Of the end justifies the means, all right? But what was Hitler trying to do? He was trying to advance human evolution. He was trying to, you know, clean up the gene pool and, and you know, from a purely naturalistic perspective, well, he was doing a good thing. And the Aryan nation was coming up. And, yeah. Well, we're, yeah. Okay. We're, well, we're going we're gonna to put an end to genetic diseases by just killing anybody that has a genetic disease, and then that won't be passed on. And, you know, I mean, like, if you sort of look big picture... And what he was proposing and what he set out to do. If you if you never consider the fact that these are human beings that you're messing with, you know, and justifies the means. You know, he didn't allow anybody to smoke. That it was in his secret, his SS, the SS people. Anybody that worked for, particularly worked directly with him or anything like. I don't know about the army itself, but the Secret Service and all these people, they, they weren't allowed to smoke. Hmm. And that was. Shucks, at that time, the Army was giving soldiers cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to defend them in any way. Don't get me wrong. But <laughs> there's little things come out. Okay. So, we kind of, how did his actions work out for him? Hmm. Probably for the good. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, yeah. I mean, he Obviously. got escorted um, out of the country. Um, and he got to keep all the stuff they gave him. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it it worked out all right, and and um, and when they when they came back, you know, everything turned out okay, all right? Does that mean that that it was good that he did that? Well, who said the ends justify the means? Yeah, except yeah. for I, I think he learned his lesson now. Well, actually, no, he didn't. Um, <laughs> he did it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then and Isaac did it too. Learn from his dad. <laughs> you know, and that's another thing. You look at how this impacted people, right? Yeah. Like father, like son. You know, and there, that gets back to the whole discussion of letting down your kids. Like, what's the first thing you're afraid of? It's not just that you look bad. Oh, don't do this. <laughs> you know, it's that old do as I say, not as I do thing. Yeah. You know? It but, doesn't hold any water. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It absolutely doesn't. So that's that's always the big fear. That's uh, that's my big fear. When I let down my kids, I think they're going to, okay, so they're going to do one of two things, all right? They're either going to follow in my footsteps and do the same thing, and that would be so horrible, and I'd feel so bad if they did that, if they, you know, sort of followed my mistake and, and you know, or else they're going to go, well, I'm going to, like, dedicate my life to not doing that you know <laughs> which okay good i'm glad you're doing the right thing but i still feel horrible about it because you know that's like they're like you oh. can't let them look at any of your old yearbooks <laughs> <laughs> yeah boy that's an inch just from the some of the the signatures mm -hmm. that stuff that people wrote <laughs> yeah yeah we will come back and get you <laughs> all right um all right. Do you see any other human ideas that contradict God's wisdom that are thought to be beneficial? You think about like in our society or anything like that. And what immediately sprung to mind for me was um, cohabitation. All right. People think, oh, we're going to live together before we get married. Yeah. Because then we we kind of find out are we compatible beforehand and stuff. And, and sort of conventional wisdom is, oh, that's a good idea. Except statistically, we know that that's not a good idea because that drastically increases your chances of getting divorced. The, just statistically. 
<laughs> I just thought of why. <laughs> you what? I just thought of why. <laughs> because, you know, if you live together a couple of years before you get married, then as soon as you get married, they're ticking you off right away. <laughs> 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 Where it's more of a gradual thing if you haven't lived with each other. <laughs> They at least have two good years. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I never heard it put that way. <laughs> yeah, I never heard it put that way. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> we, well, we need help. And actually, I know. actually the, the flaw in that is, the, the, and the, the, pro, the, the problem that, that they found that happens is, when you're living together and you're not married, you're still dating. Right. And and so in other words, when like when you're dating, you sort of put on your best face. Right? Now, not that it stays that way necessarily, <laughs> right, depending how long you're living together. But there's still there's always that sort of there's really nothing keeping you here. So I really kinda need to behave. To some degree at least. Whereas after you get married, it's like you know how hard it would be to have to go through the whole divorce thing? You don't want to do that. It would be easier for you to just put up with me so I can relax a little bit. I always thought it was somewhat like you you, you can't think very much of that of her. If, if you're going to just let her live with you, you know. I don't, that's not exactly how I meant to say Without that. honoring, the, giving her the commitment saying, yeah. Yeah, you can't think too much of her. Sure. I mean, you could... Go down to East Cleveland and get that, you know. Yeah, no, I ten bucks know, or something. Like I, 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 I don't know what the rate is now, but uh, it's, 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 I mean, yeah, I it's been a while, huh, bud? <laughs> yeah. A lot, lot higher than that. Oh, is it? Okay. It's gone up. But inflation. You know, you know inflation. What I'm to say. <laughs> so yeah, I, dude, I worked in the ghetto, so yeah, I saw that, that okay. during the nighttime. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, well, but no, that's true. There's, I, I knew a couple that were living together. They have, um, they had daughter in college. And still weren't married, oh, well, and had two other kids. And I thought, at what point are you gonna say, you know what? I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And what about the kids? What do you do with the kids? Right, yeah. right. You know, and to what's that to, say to them? Right, to to not give them that stability and that you know, what? How do you? I I, I don't, don't know understand. how you'd explain that. I don't either. I, I it's beyond me, so I don't know. So, but yeah, there's, you know, there's a lot of things. I think that was the one that immediately sprung to mind for me. I'm sure there's others. I don't know, maybe think of some, but sort of what other things that are sort of conventional wisdom that run absolutely contrary to, uh, you know, maybe another thing. This is this is something that it's a real easy trap to fall into as a parent, All right? What, what do you want for your kids? You want them to have a good job so that they can be comfortable and, and have money and, you know, and things like that. And. And, it, and it's kind of struck me that, and I, I feel that way too, all right? All right, I want my kids to be happy, but at the same time, what I want more for them is to have a life of meaning, a life of service, a life of faith, and you know, and, and things like that. And, that. and that doesn't necessarily go along with having a lot of money. And, um, and, and so, but at the same time, I don't want them to struggle. But I know that God uses struggle to draw us closer to Him, you know. And so, as a parent, I'm glad it's not up to me. <laughs> you're not thinking as a pastor; you're thinking as a father. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted my kids to be happy, to follow their dreams, and have their own health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. <laughs> you know. You know, because that's when you, when they get their own health insurance, that's when you stop worrying about them, because you know, if something happens, you don't want them to lose everything they have. You know, and there's that time in between where they get a job that's actually a career after they graduate from college. You mm -hmm. know, where I they, can relate they don't to that. Have that. But I would, yeah. but I use the automobile insurance. Oh. To, <laughs> I'm we trying, pay for that I'm for quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> when well, they could afford their own car insurance. Me. This month was the last <laughs> time, you know, I am married. <laughs> marriage vows or, or they have somebody officiate the thing mm -hmm. how, how who came up with this common law marriage where you if you live together for seven years you're considered legally married with with no serum i mean no, nobody 
you know, performing yeah. anything. Yeah, some states have that and some don't. Um, how, how did that come about? I think it, it, I think comes it was a legal to, thing. It's nothing in... In, in some places, it actually becomes a legal thing after a certain point. There's more to it than just living together. If you sort of think of each other as husband and wife, you refer to each other that way and, and stuff like that. There's a whole bunch of rules, isn't there? Yeah, and, it, and it's different in different states. Betray um, themselves as married. You know, there's also a lot of, and this is completely off topic, but there's also a lot of debate about whether the state should even have their nose in marriage at all. Well, because we've got a lot of idiots for guys that's why <laughs> they have it i mean you know in 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 some places they make um, babies and they it's leave. a yeah marriage is is a religious institution not a, a civil institution um which is you know a whole other way <coughs> of looking me. at it i you know i don't know what the what the what the perfect solution is well i think the state got into it because they didn't want brothers and sisters getting married could be. Well, you could just make <coughs> rules, you know. Cousins or <laughs> my grandparents. You could make rules about that too, because nowadays, cousins. whether you're married or not, has nothing to do with. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you've got not only do you have um, people that choose just not to get married, but act like they're married. Um, you also have these what they call open marriages and and things like that, where they're where they're married but they act like they're not. You know. Or they act like they're married to somebody else, or you know. So I get married. Right. Yeah, and it's sort I of. I think the legal issues when it comes to life insurance and hospitalization and. Right. Yeah. All this and kind of. So stuff. it's a mess. <laughs> and, you know what's really bad is that the teachers in school are used to. They don't even think anything of it of the kids having different last name than their parents that are bringing. Yeah, when I was growing up, that was really different. It. Yeah. But nowadays. That would have been a. I don't know. I'm not sure because never had it. <clears throat> Although I saw a statistic in North Ridgeville, eighty percent of kids live in a two-parent home. Good for them. Now, I'm not sure if that was eighty percent actually 20 percent married, don't. but yeah, I mean, it's still there's twenty percent that don't. But you know, I I was sort of I think mean, in most places it's closer to fifty percent. So I was kind of surprised to to see that. Well, um, Don said we're backwards. <laughs> Mm-hmm. We don't know what's going on in the rest of the world. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's a good thing. <laughs> and now we go full circle. <laughs> yeah. Right. Sounds like a good time to stop. Mm-hmm. Right. Heavenly Father, we don't always know where you're sending us. We don't always know what to expect. And and sometimes things just go, from our perspective, horribly wrong, and, and yet we know that uh, just because things aren't going the way we expect doesn't mean that it's not perfectly part of your plan. And um, and as much as we mess things up, you still anticipate those things and, and work through them and, and bring us blessings. And so we pray that you be with us, give us faith to trust in you, even when it seems like you're not there. We know that you are because you promised to be. And so just give us faith to trust you and to... Um, and to, to follow your will for our lives and um, <clears throat> to know that, that even when things look like they're piled up against us and our backs are against the wall, that you're there with us and there's no enemy that or obstacle that we could face that you cannot overcome. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.